Hey guys, today we're doing episode four of Wreck This Journal. So this journal is actually meant to be like destroyed, like throw it on the side of the road, let a car run over it. Destroy it. But I have interpreted the instructions in my own way and I like to make everything look nice. Just a disclaimer in case you're expecting me to destroy this. I am not going to destroy it. I'm going to make it look nice. Okay, here we have my wreck this journal and I'm flipping to the page, climb up high and drop the journal. Sounds dangerous. I'm the most uncoordinated person that I have ever met and I am very risk averse for good reason. Help. Safety first, guys. I will not be climbing anywhere. Instead, I will be sending defenseless animals into the sky. Have a safe flight. Anyone but me. I'm taking out my Micron Fine Liner and outlining all of the pencil markings that I have just drawn. After I finished going over all of the pencil marks, I took out my eraser and erased them. You gotta really shake that, shake that out. I think we're all clear. And ready for our Cali Art Art Markers, the most repetitive name on earth. I may never get over it, but I do like these $25 Amazon markers. I took out two lighter brown colors and colored in each of the baskets that these animals are sitting in. The idea is that all of these animals are racing up to the top of maybe a mountain, presumably, and they are going to drop the book. <gasps> up next, I'm using this blue color for the background. And of course, my alcohol marker ran out of ink halfway through. Don't be mad at it. It's not its fault. He doesn't mean it. Honestly, this is just kind of the way it goes with alcohol markers. They run out of ink very quickly. I really did not have any other alcohol markers that were even close to the one on the right side. So it kind of just is what it is. Different colors. <laughs> After that, I colored in all of the hot air balloons. This one's pink and yellow. This one's green and purple. And this one is red and pink. Weird color choices were made here, guys. There's also some really small hot air balloons that I will fix later. I colored in this hot air balloon, which had a different pattern. I really liked it, which is why I'm pointing it out. And then I moved on to the animals. This is supposed to be a hamster, but I think it kind of looks like a corgi a little bit. I mean, yeah, I guess. The raccoon is probably my favorite. I think he looks really cute. <laughs> I made the bunny a light tan color and colored the wreck this journal that this bird is carrying, as well as this bird up here with some purpley pink colors. For the snail, I used tie dye colors in honor of Marge. If you don't know who Marge is, this is her. She's a squishy. I'm taking out my 132 pack of Prismacolor colored pencils and we're going to be shading this piece. I think most of you guys know by now that shading is usually my favorite part of any piece. I have been really loving just putting my alcohol markers down first as a base color and then adding my colored pencils on top of that. Alcohol markers just make a really good base color for my pieces and then adding those colored pencils on top gives it extra dimensionality and makes everything so much more fun and relaxing. I also feel like the colors just come out better with a base color down. You'll notice that I'm coloring quite messily. I kind of just color whatever and don't really do it too neatly. That is because I use a colored pencil blender after the fact. So I just get all of my colors down and then blend it all out. That approach to shading is not without its mishaps and mistakes. For example, when I decided to start shading the bird, not this bird, but the bird up here, I did this. My colored pencil blender broke. It was already so small, so young, so fragile, so much more to give. Goodbye, my friend. It's okay, I just sharpened it and it was fine. I just hold my pencils so harshly. Like I really have a strong grip on them. They suffer as a result. They break a lot of the times. Really, I just need to loosen my grip, but I can't. Can't get a grip. <laughs> taking out my white gel pen to add some highlights to the eyes, the nose, the tongue, anywhere I feel like needs some shine. 
needs some shine. I don't even know what I'm saying, guys. I don't know what that means. This is what the final thing turned out looking like, and I have to say, I really like this page. It feels like it has a story. All of these animals are racing to the top of a mountain to see who can drop this book first, which is just a ridiculous concept and makes no sense. I don't know why they're trying to desperately drop a book, but conceptually I'm on board with the competition. Up next, I'm flipping to the page that says, write one word over and over. I'm taking out my acrylic paint markers by Artistro. There are a bunch of different colors and I like to write with them. For this page, I decided to write one word. Get it? Because the prompt says write one word over and over again. Rather than taking the time to choose a single word for this page, I used the phrase one word for three reasons. The first reason is I'm extremely indecisive and it feels like this huge choice to pick one word. There are just so many words out there and it would take me an indescribable amount of time to actually choose one that I was happy with. Reason number two kind of relates to that. What does the word mean? What does it mean to me? Do I have to explain it to everyone? Why did I choose this word? So much pressure. Reason number three is that I thought using one word as my word was more creative. It's probably not. I very intentionally do not look up other people's Rectus Journal pages because I don't want to be influenced by their decisions, so I truly have no idea if using one word is very common or not. There are just so many words out there, and this was way simpler. Up next, we're flipping to the page that says, Stand here, wipe your feet, jump up and down. Instead of taking out my bare feet and jumping up and down on this thing, I have decided to interpret this prompt a little more loosely. I took out my Micron Fineliner and went over all of my pencil marks and made sure I got the outline to the shoe correct. Yes, her left leg may be a tad bit too thin. I acknowledge that now. But I was generally satisfied and erased the pencil marks. After that, I took out my alcohol markers to give a base color to the whole drawing. Something I've been really interested in recently is using unexpected colors for shading. For example, on this sock, I used bright pink for the shading, which makes no sense. I also used bright pink on the legs, which makes no sense, and on the laces, which makes no sense. You may hate this, that's okay, we can agree to disagree, but I love it. Yeah, I like that. I do change my mind every five seconds though, so we'll see if I like it in a month. I went for a pink and green theme. I was honestly just trying to design some shoes that I personally would like to wear. I took out my scrapbooking circles. These were a gift, the best gift I've ever received because they make perfect circles, and I colored that in yellow. I like this. I should have left left it as is. Put it in the book, I outlined the prompt, and then I said, it needs another circle. I don't know why I did this. It looks terrible. I don't like the second circle at all. I hate the color. I hate the size of it. I hate the position of it. Tell me you're dramatic without telling me you're dramatic. Up next, we're taking out my colored pencils. I don't know why I'm showing you the process of me picking them up in such a strange way, but we are switching to a yellow background. I'm so sorry, things will never be the same. I originally did this drawing at the end of April, but I didn't add these colored pencils until this week. So I really just decided to use the colored pencils to emphasize what was already going on in the drawing and make things look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'll stop. I added the finishing touches to this piece with my colored pencils, and this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I really do like this piece, but I have to say I really don't like that smaller circle. I really wish I had just left that yellow circle, but overall, this is an okay page. And here are all three of the pages that I did this episode for Wreck This Journal. If you're interested in other prompt journal videos, I do have a whole series on Create This Book and Wreck This Journal, which I'm sure will be linked somewhere. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday at 2 p.m. Bye!